So that's the review, but I do have a little bit of news and commentary. I sometimes do that in my reviews. And because it is something that I'm celebrating, I have brought out the Everclear. <laughs> oh, it's been a long time since I've drunk Everclear. And I brought out my good glass. I'm not going to put much in here because I'll kill myself. It's Everclear. Last time I had this, I was mixing it with orange juice because we ran out of vodka for, um, for uh, you know, screwdrivers. So I want to toast with Everclear uh, the fact that the JJ verse, or as I sometimes call it, the Jar Jar verse, because I really hate the um, Kelvin timeline, the Jar Jar verse is now dead. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's been a long time. It's been a very long time since I've had Everclear. Holy crap. Oh, God. <laughs> and Tara Miller says, hear, hear. Yes. The Jar Jar verse is dead. It is now officially dead. Um, I, I think of this as the Jar Jar verse. God, I'm dead. Burns going down. I have not had Everclear in probably 15, 15 years. <laughs> but it has finally gone down. It, they have called the fourth Star Trek movie in the Jar Jar verse shelved. What that really means is stick a fork in it. It is done. Um, this was, frankly, entirely predictable. They spent ridiculous amounts of money on big, dumb action movies. Here's the thing, right? In real life, and you can see this when Sci-Fi Channel does it. In real life, there is probably only, in terms of real hardcore science fiction fans, there is really only about four million of them in the United States. Now, they were able to get Star Trek into a crossover where they could get people who weren't, you know, just diehard Star Trek fans. But... Or science fiction fans, rather. But in order to turn a profit with a Star Trek movie, it needs to have a much smaller budget and spent more on a good cerebral plot. Now, my favorite Star Trek movie is Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. And it is exactly that. It did not have a huge budget. And it, uh, it appealed on a cerebral level to fans. And so it was a damned good movie and it had some crossover. The other thing was, with the Jar Jarverse, they had a cast who were not dependent on Star Trek. The original series cast was generally very badly typecast, except for Shatner and Nimoy. Almost none of them ever worked at anything. They needed this paycheck. They were tied to Star Trek. They needed this paycheck. The Jar Jar Verse cast doesn't need the paycheck. Not a single one of them. The, the, the leads do not need this paycheck. They're doing other things all the time. So when um, Chris Pine held out for the money that he was promised for this film, because the last one, Star Trek Beyond, did not do very well at the box office. It certainly didn't do as well as the other ones. He had already signed a contract for when, how much money he was going to get for Star Trek, the fourth movie. And they said, geez, the last one didn't make it that much money. Could you cut it? And he said, no. And he can afford to do that. He, he, he does other things all the time. He is an actor who's in demand. He does not need the paycheck from Star Trek. So now with him gone, they have shelved the movie. And there is uh, significant problems getting financial backing for Star Trek, significant problems that I do not believe they will ever overcome. So, yay again, bit of a toast, gonna burn again going down, <laughs> but the Jar Jar verse is dead and it will probably never come back. God. <laughs> you, you can't imagine that I actually did used to pour, pour orange juice into this stuff instead of a vodka for screwdrivers. Ugh. Jar Jar Verse is dead. 
I hope it will never come back from the dead because I hated it. With Star Trek, you need a lower budget and you need a cerebral kind of story. You can get the action in it. Again, look to Star Trek 2, best one of the series as far as I'm concerned. Lower budget and characters who were needing this. If I were going to do it, this is my idea. I'm going to give this to you, Paramount and CBS. I'm just going to give it to you outright. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. My throat's burning down. <laughs> All right. Here, I'm just going to give it to you. I'm going to give you the next, st next story if you want to do it. Here's what you do. You stop being in the exact same time frame all the time. Take it out a thousand years. Make it the 31st century or the 30th century or something like that. Do not shoot in Hollywood. Do not shoot in Canada. Go somewhere. You know, I'm from Lincoln, Nebraska, a city of 250,000. I am half an hour away from Omaha, Nebraska, which is a city of one million people. Shoot it there. Shoot it there with local actors. Shoot it with local actors who are so happy to be getting this paycheck that they will stick with it no matter what you do. Shoot it there with actors who are total unknowns and maybe you could even put it in their contract. You may not move out of Omaha because that will cut down on the work they can do. There's certainly lots of theater work in Omaha that they could do you know, on hiatus and stuff like that, but do it somewhere else. Do it where the actors, and we have SAG actors out there. We have some very good actors here. Do it with actors who really need this work and who will work for less than these people. You know, if any actor in the area of Lincoln, Omaha, Nebraska, you give them a paycheck of $250,000 or above, you know, you don't have to give them millions of dollars. You don't have to give them millions of dollars. Our cost of living here is so much less than it is in Los Angeles or the area. You can give them 250K and they will be thrilled. You know, so you can get like a $3 million budget per episode. And it's not all going to people's paychecks. Shoot somewhere other than Hollywood, California. Come here or someplace like it where your actors are going to be thrilled to have this paycheck that they would never have expected to see. You know, our SAG actors here don't work that much. And when they do, they don't get that much money. They're theater actors. Come here. Shoot here. Trust me. Uh, you know, rent out the PBS uh, station uh, studios over here in Lincoln. They have three different studios, one of which is huge. They originally shot Sesame Street there. The very first episode of Sesame Street was shot at the PBS studios in Lincoln, Nebraska. It's huge. Go rent them. Build some in Omaha, for God's sake. You know, with, with, with the money you're going to save, you can build a studio. So do that. Make this series a thousand years in the future. So we don't have to worry about all this backstory. You can make the tech look amazing, um, you know, with hollow displays everywhere, even something more interesting than that. Um, do that. Don't stay in the same period all the time. And I would have to say, with any luck, STD, which is what I call Star Trek Discovery, I have said before, STD is in its own universe as far as I'm concerned. It is not in the prime timeline. It can't fit there. STD is in its own universe, and that's why I call as it's STD and the mirror universe to STD, which is not the mirror universe that we saw in the original series or later on. I call that the AIDS universe because STDs are bad enough, but then you go over and get full-blown AIDS. STD is a stupid, dark mess of crap. Last season, I, I reviewed every single episode, and it was painful. It was a chore. I hated doing it. So this season, I am doing the season opener, opener a mid-season review, and then a season end review. And <laughs> if they ever kill this show, and I hope they do, I will bring bringing out my Everclear again and burning my throat just like I'm doing here. <laughs> and to be honest, I suspect that this show has a low viewership. I think it's hanging on by its nails, and that's why they brought in Captain Pike and the Enterprise. Because we don't know 
what the viewership is because CBS won't share those numbers. But I'll tell you this, the fact that they won't share those numbers should tell you something. That should tell you if the numbers were good, CBS would be thrilled to share them. They would be thrown out there saying, this is great. Look at all the viewers. They're not telling us. I think that means that this show is getting a very low viewership. Beyond that, Paramount CBS, I never thought that I would ever say this in my life because Star Trek has always been very big for me. Um, there is a date that I celebrate that is not my birthday. It is the date that I achieved sapience. Very, very young. Um, it was a Star Trek episode. It was uh, a private little war. And the moment that I achieved sapience was when I saw the Magatu. I remember that moment specifically. You know, if you are a parent, you, you know, there's a point at which your kid's just kind of doing stuff. They're sentient. But then they become aware of their own self-awareness. And I call that sapience. That happened at a very specific time and a very specific date, and that is what I celebrate instead of my birthday. Star Trek has been huge for me in my life. However, at this point, with the people who are running it, both at CBS and Paramount, it may be time to put Star Trek to bed. Rather than let the franchise go the way of big, dumb action movies, and stupidity and darkness and horror that Gene Roddenberry, I guarantee you, is rolling over ahead in his grave at Discovery. It may just be time to put it on the bed. It does not excite me anymore in any way, and I think that's the case with a lot of fans. CBS Paramount has found a way to destroy a multi-billion dollar franchise because they put it in the hands of a bunch of hacks with not an original thought in their head except dark horror, and twisted. I've said oftentimes before, the problem is Hollywood, California. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. It is a place where rape and child molestation rule the day. It's a place where horrible people do horrible things to other horrible people on a daily basis. And all the people who live there and work there know is horror. And if horror is the only thing you know, Horror is the only thing you can create. And Star Trek was never horror. Star Trek was like what we see in the Orville. Uh, Tara Merrill says they killed it by making it too dark and airing it behind the CBS pay access paywall. Yeah. Put locker TV dot T-O. Or, um... Bitch for it! Oh, excuse me. Bittorn. Uh. But if you go to um, putlockertv.to, within minutes of it having aired, you can watch it for free. And BitTorrent, of course, same thing. Um, that's how I watch it. I'm not paying dime one for CBS All Access. No fracking way. I'm not paying dime one just so I can watch one TV show. Screw that. No, put it out there so that it's free and make money off the advertising just like you do when you air things on the uh, airwaves. Otherwise, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I do. I'm going to pirate it. But you're absolutely right, Tara. They killed it by making it too dark. They absolutely did. And they are talentless hacks who only know how to, to create darkness because that's all they ever see in their own lives. This is why you need to take Star Trek out of that horrible town where rape and child molestation rule the day. Take it out. Bring it here, where rape and child molestation, well, can it happen? Yes, but we consider it true horror. It is not a fact of everyday life. We do not have casting couches outside of Hollywood. There are a bunch of talentless hacks that they have turned it over to. The best thing that CBS Paramount can do would be lift and totally rescind the fan film guidelines. Allow fans who understand and respect this material to go to work. And if CBS then wants to, like say for Star Trek Continues, an amazing show, grab that and put it on television. Run it for, well, I don't know, 10, 11 weeks, I think how many episodes they had. I bet that sucker gets ratings like mad because those were good. They're, they were made by a guy, Vic Mignogna, who has love for the series, understands this series, and I think they would kill in the ratings. If you're not going to do that, 
If you're not going to rescind that and let people with creativity who really know what this is about, it's time to let Star Trek go. It is best to just let it slip quietly into the night rather than watch CBS Paramount No Talent Hacks waste money on it forever. Either let the fans take over doing the job or just put it to bed. Just put it to bed. And I never thought I would ever say that in my life. I never sort of thought I would ever say it, but they really killed it, as Tara Miller said. They really have killed it. They have destroyed a multi-billion dollar franchise somehow by making it dark. And again, airing it behind the CBS axis. Paywall was a dumbass thing to do. <laughs> Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.